Dear students, welcome to the class of Business Mathematics and this is our first lecture and in this lecture I want to give a brief review about number system. So first of all, what is natural number? The set of all natural numbers is denoted by capital N and is defined by N equal 1 to infinity. Since I said the set, so that's why each natural number are separated by commas and enclosed within brace or second bracket and here one is a natural number two is a natural number three is a natural number and so on up to infinity so the second one is integer and the set of all integers is denoted by capital Z and is defined by 0 1 to 3 up to infinity and to the left side minus 1 minus 2 up to negative infinity and this uh, the sort of all integers you can also write in this way 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 plus minus 4 up to plus minus infinity and the third one is rational number so what is rational number Rational number is the ratio of two numbers and the set of all rational numbers is denoted by Q and is defined by P by Q such that P Q belongs to Z and Q is not equal 0 since division by 0 is not allowed so you cannot divide a number by 0 because this is undefined or infinity but you, you can divide a number and you can divide 0 by any number so the answer will be 0 so the ratio of two integers is the rational number in other way we can say a number which uh, we can express as a fraction of two integers then it is called rational number for example 5 by 2 this is a rational number because this is the ratio of two integers and minus 9 by 2 another rational number and here 2 is a rational number because uh, each integer 2 is an integer but each integer it has denominator 1 so we can say each integer also a rational number and that's why we can write a set of all rational number set of all integers is a subset of a set of all rational numbers and here if we compare set of all natural numbers and set of all integers then you see set of all natural numbers included set of all natural numbers included to the set of all integers so n is a part of z therefore we can say n is a subset of z and here we can say z is a subset of q since uh, each uh, every integer also you can define as a rational number since it has denominator 1 and again you see there are some decimal numbers and there are some other decimal numbers like this one this one and this one and these decimal numbers you can write in the form as a fraction for example 1.5 it means 15 by 10 and 1.52 it means 152 divided by 100 and so on and this this one is the repeating decimal number here 3 is repeated you see 333 and 1.52 5252 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5 is going to repeat here and here 532 532 532 is repeating so any repeating decimal number we can write in the form as a fraction and any terminating decimal number we can write as a fraction these are the terminating decimal number 
So let me define here uh, the decimal numbers are of three kinds. First of uh, first terminating decimal number. terminating decimal number and second repeating decimal number repeating decimal number and the third one non repeating and non terminating non terminating decimal number so terminating decimal numbers uh, they, these are the terminating decimal number. Let me write here again 1.5, 1.57, or 1.572. So these are the terminating decimal numbers <coughs> and repeating decimal numbers. Let's say 0 0.333 and so on, or 0 0.3232 and so on. Or 0 0.325, 325, and so on. And first and one, second, first one and second one, we can write in the form as a fraction. So they are the rational number. But the third one, non-repeating and non-terminating. For example, 1.01, 001, triple zero one, and so on. So this one is a non-repeating and non-terminating decimal number and the third one we cannot write in the form as a fraction. We cannot write the third one in the form as a fraction. So the third one is not a rational number. This is irrational number. The set of all irrational numbers is denoted by Q prime. The set of all irrational numbers is denoted by Q prime. And the definition will be like this, a number which we cannot write in the form as a fraction of two integers, then it is called irrational number. For example, root 2, which is an irrational number, root 3, irrational, root 4, however, rational, because root 4 is equal to 2, and 2 means 2 by 1, so it's a rational number, and root 5, irrational, k we put 7 irrational, pi irrational, e irrational and so on. And the next one, real number, set of all real number. The set of all rational and irrational numbers is called the set of all real numbers and it is denoted by r. So r equal q union q prime. The set of all real numbers we can um, define in another way. We all probably familiar with this uh, num line and this line is known as real number line. It means any number on this line is real. For example, there are how many numbers between 1 and 2? There are infinitely many numbers between 1 and 2 and those numbers are decimal numbers and we know decimal numbers are of three kinds, terminating, repeating and non-repeating and non-terminating and those decimal numbers will be either irrational or irrational. So the numbers within 1 and 2 are real and the number you see here 1, 2, 3, these are the integers and integers also rational. So any number on this line you can express either as a fraction of two integers or you cannot and those numbers will be either rational or irrational. It means any number on this line will be a real number. And the next one is the complex number. Complex number, uh, the set of all complex numbers is denoted by C and is defined by C equal A plus IB. This is a combination of two real numbers by the help of I and A is a real number, B is a real number. So A plus IB is a complex number. A plus IB is a complex number where AB real, AB should be real, AB should be real and again I square equal to negative 1 or I equal to root negative 1. Okay. 
for example um, 2 plus i3 is a complex number or 2 minus i3 is a complex number or minus 2 minus i3 complex or minus 2 plus i3 these are the complex numbers and, and how can we show a complex number in a graph uh, let us uh, show 2 plus i3 in this graph and here 2 is the real part of this complex number and 3 is the imaginary part it means 2 will follow the real line 1 2 positive 2 and positive 3 it will go up 1 2 3 so this point indicates a complex number which is 2 plus i3 and if you move down 3 units down then this point indicates 2 minus i3 and if you go left 2 units left and 3 units up then this point indicates minus 2 plus i3 and from here if you move 3 units down then this dot indicate minus 2 minus i3 which is a complex number and again 2 this 2 is also a complex number because 2 equal 2 plus i into 0 2 plus i into 0 so 2 is a complex number having imaginary part 0 therefore we can say each every real number also a complex number and there are lots of other complex numbers so set of all real number is a subset of set of all complex numbers and here before we say it uh, n is a subset of z then we said z is a subset of q and from this relation we can say q is a subset of r and here i said r is a subset of c so if we um, accumulate all those relations then it will be n subset z and z subset q q subset r and r subset c so it means uh, any natural number will be also an integer any natural number will also be a rational number any natural number will also be a real number any natural number will also be a complex number and again any integer uh, will also be a rational number any integer will also be a real number any integer will also be a complex number and <coughs> any rational number will also be a real number any rational number will also be a complex number but the converse is not true you cannot say any real number will be a rational number this is not true any complex number will be a natural number this is not true so the next one is imaginary number or completely imaginary number a number of this form there is no real part in this number so this one is called imaginary number for example uh, square root of negative 2 it means square root of uh, in, instead of this negative sign I can write I square into 2 so this equal I root 2 is an imaginary number or let's say minus 4 it means i square into 2 square square root so which is equal i2 so this number is a is a completely imaginary number or simply we can say imaginary number and here this is also important to know absolute value of a number of a real number let's say x is a real number and uh, this sign is the absolute sign absolute value of x is equal either will be x or negative x absolute value of x will be x if x is positive or 0 and minus x minus x if x is negative so absolute value of x will be either x or negative x it will be x if x is positive or 0 negative x it will be if x is negative for example let's say absolute value of 6 
so this is in this within this range since 6 is a positive number so we can directly write absolute value of 6 equal to 6 however minus 6 absolute value of minus 6 this is within this range this is a negative number so you need to add an additional uh, negative sign here negative negative 6 so it means positive 6 therefore absolute value of any positive or negative number will be always positive and again absolute value of 0 will be 0 since x positive or 0 uh, when x is greater than or equal to 0 then this is the definition and the next one is prime number prime number uh, will start from 2 so the definition will be like this an integer greater than 1 is prime if its factors only 1 and itself <laughs> in other way we can say an integer greater than 1 is prime if it is divisible by 1 and itself for example 2 is a prime number because 2 has two factors 1 and 2 and 3 is a prime number because it has uh, two factors 1 and itself however 4 is not a prime because it has factors 1, 2 and 2 other than uh, uh, 1 and itself and 5 is again a prime number because it is divisible by only 1 and 5 6 is not a prime number because we can write 6 equal 1 into 3 into 2 and 7 is a prime number because it has factors 1 and 7 Similarly, we can say these are the set of all prime numbers and so what is a composite number? An integer greater than 1 is composite if its factors not only 1 and itself. So uh, for example, 4 is a composite number because its factors 1, 2, 2 and 6 is a composite number because it, it has factors 3 and 2 and 8 is a composite number, 9 is a composite number and so on. And the next one is even number and a number which is divisible by 2 is called an even number. It is denoted by 2n and again an integer which is not divisible by 2 is called an odd number. It is even denoted by 2n plus 1. And for example 2 is an even number 4, 6, 8, all the way up to infinity and 0 also is an even number because 0 is divisible by 2 minus 2 also even because minus 2 is divisible by 2 minus 4 all the way to negative infinity so this is the set of all even numbers and set of all odd numbers similarly will be 1 3 5 7 all the way to infinity plus infinity and negative 1 negative 3 negative 5 all the way to negative infinity so this is a brief preview of number system i think you can use this knowledge to in your whole course and thank you for your listening